Hello, I'd like to give you a very warm welcome back to Tiny House and Off-Grid Resources. In last week's video, which you can see up here, that was the history of electroculture from the 1780s up until the present day. Today I want to talk about science versus the New Age woo-woo. In the 1700s, science was expanding into new horizons and not yet bought out by big business interests. French experimenters were working with their newfangled electricity and its effect on plants' growth. Magnetism was already well studied, so an overlap of these disciplines, collaboration and results was bound to happen, resulting in a comprehensive record of its development from that century onwards. Although the New Age fluffies have taken the electroculture science as their own and like to incorporate crystals, Fibonacci spirals and uh, smudge sticks, the scientific results and the empirical results speak for themselves. According to my research, many proponents of electroculture describe it as earth electricity as opposed to AC or DC. Science likes to put electroculture into one of two boxes, magnetism or electricity, because that's what their instruments can measure. Volts, amps, gauss, polarity, that kind of thing. But the Woo Woo Brigade will speak of prana and chi and earth energies. Many of them incorporate unnecessary symbolism into their designs. Fact is, electroculture works. Now, a homogenous overview of my own inner standing of electroculture is that plants are physiologically stimulated by a mixture of energies, some not yet understood in current scientific terms. Now, these energies are available to plants and always have been, but nowadays they're disrupted by mankind's huge buildings, roads, radio transmissions, cell phones and power lines, that kind of thing. So how these electroculture antennas help is by attracting and focusing the natural earth energies flow into the sky, into the atmosphere, so that plants can achieve the growth that they're naturally able to do without the depletive effects of our electromagnetic fog that we've surrounded the earth with over the last 50 or 60 years. Science has proven many times over that seed and plant growth are positively influenced by exposure to a south magnetic field, but never the North Pole field. This is the real reason that crops grow ridiculously huge in Alaska. Alaska is the home of the North Pole, which is the place on Earth where all the south magnetic field is drawn to. The concentration in Alaska of South Magnetic Field is immense and the flow is still healthy up there. The antennas are scientifically researched to concentrate the flow of the South Magnetic Flux into the area around the antenna in a radius equal to 1.5 times its height with diminishing effectiveness towards the perimeter. This growing stimulus affects plants, water, animals, and us. So obviously, the higher the antenna, the better. Yannick van Duren from France is the man with 25 years of practical experience with electroculture. His videos are available by clicking on the link below. Yannick has many one and a half to two and a half hour long seminars where he describes and explains in great detail all of the essential elements to electroculture. You can read more about Yannick van Duren, even contact him through his website, which is electroculturevanduren.com. Link below in the description. 
Recently, I've been in touch with Arizona man Matt Roski. Matt has a website called Cultivate Elevate. He's recently exploded in the YouTube and TikTok world with his explanations of how to get these effects in your own garden using copper, wire antenna and sticks. Link here and below. Matt explains how energies are focused through these antennas and dispersed in a far more holistic way. Much the same as how clean and alive the air feels after a decent thunderstorm. Seeing as I'm working with Matt, I'm sure he won't mind if I read to you from his website. So what is electroculture? Electroculture is the ancient practice of increasing yields, utilizing certain materials to harvest the Earth's atmospheric energy. This was presented in 1749 by Abbe Nolaire in France, in the 1920s by Justin Christophe Fleur, also France, and in the 1940s by Victor Schauberger, who was a Austrian forester and prolific researcher. This energy is always present and all around us, also known as chi, prana, life force and the ether. When using electroculture, there's no need for the use of pesticides, manure or fertilizers. This is primarily why this information was suppressed. All you need is the sun, the cloud, the rains and the nitrogen in the air and the ability to harness atmospheric energy. These atmospheric antennas can be created from materials such as wood, copper, zinc and brass. When adding these atmospheric antennas to your garden, soil or farm, they will amplify your yields, combat frost and excessive heat, reduce irrigation needs, reduce pests and increase the magnetism of your soil, leading to more nutrients in the long run. So how do I make an electroculture antenna? Atmospheric antennas can be made out of wooden dowels or sticks. The taller you make your antenna, the larger your plants will grow. Justin Christophe Fleur recommended 20 feet plus, but any height will have an effect. You can wrap the dowel rod or local wood with copper and zinc wire, making a Fibonacci spiral or vortex up into the air facing magnetic north. The combination of zinc and copper can work like a battery when the sun hits the antenna. You'll then place this antenna about six to eight inches into your soil and let Mother Earth do the magic. Get creative, try different designs, and you'll see the true potential of electroculture. Here's some lovely examples of electroculture antennas doing their thing in pots. Now some frequently asked questions about electroculture is how does the electroculture antenna work? The antenna harvests the energy of the earth through the series of vibration and frequency such as rain and wind and temperature fluctuations. These antenna lead to stronger plants, more moisture for the soil and reduced pest infestations. This is one of the many reasons we've not been taught about this ancient practice. Some interesting findings of Justin Christophe Leu on electroculture plant growth. In fields which were not manured or irrigated, growths grew upwards of seven feet plus. Potatoes grown in the same condition, six feet three inches high, carrying 30 to 35 potatoes and weighed one or two pounds per potato. Grape vineyards impacted by phylloxera were healed and rejuvenated. The grapes ended up sweeter and had a much richer flavor. Carrots grew to the length of 19 inches and beetroots to 18 inches and nearly 17 inches in circumference. An old pear tree, which had hardly any bark left, was fully rejuvenated by electroculture and started producing pears of up to one pound each, all without the use of manure pesticides or fertilizer, just the atmospheric energy, magnetism and the telluric currents of the earth. A simple solution to solving the shortages that we're all facing right now. When Victor Schauberger 
was studying agriculture, he noticed that copper, brass, bronze tools would not impact the magnesium of the soil like those made of iron. Iron tools decreased the magnetism of the soil and made the farmers work harder and caused drought-like conditions. While on the other hand, copper, brass or bronze tools did not alter the magnetism of the soil, led to higher quality soil and required less work when used. When Victor showed this to the local council, they said his work would impact their profits on the fertilizer that they were promoting. They decided to petition against him with the help of local media to inform farmers that they would yield too much food and it would lead to less money in their pocket. The farmers went against Victor's work and this knowledge was lost in the 1950s. It's also noted that slugs only come around when there are high amounts of iron present in the soil to clean up the mess that their antennas are picking up on. When copper tools or atmospheric antennas are used, the slugs disappear.